So today we're going to be looking at a sermon entitled I want to do away with the demon of unforgiveness. There is a demon that is behind every unforgiveness. That is why it is very hard for you to forgive somebody willingly. Because there is a demon behind that thing. Unforgiveness is more of spiritual things than physical. Okay? It's more of spiritual issues than physical issues. It's more of spiritual issues than physical issues. So many people are living a life of unforgiveness. Even pastors, okay, big shop. Many people have cultivated a life of unforgiveness. Some are even praying and praying that the person must come and beg before you can forgive. You know, I've asked so many of you since until he come and beg me, then I will forgive him. <laughs> One of you, in the presence of waiting for him or her, and then you now die, what will be your, what will be your fate? Okay? If he does not come and beg me, I will never forgive her. I will never forgive him. That has become like, a culture, a way of life to us, even as Christians. I've asked some Christians, says, I will never forgive that person until he come and beg me. I will never forgive. That language is not coming from you, it's coming from demon. Such a language is not from you. Okay? You know, I told us that whether you are Jesus, so far you are here on net. Whether you are the most anointed, two people are talking to us at every time, 24-7. Two people are talking to us. God, the Spirit of God, and that of Satan. Don't say, oh, somebody, oh, Satan cannot talk to you. Satan is talking to every man of God. No matter how anointed you are, Sit and talk to you. Your pastor might not tell you this, but that is the reality about spirituality. Your wife in the house, you the husband, somebody, Satan is, the spirit of Satan is talking to you, the spirit of God is talking to you. That is why God says we must have the spirit of discernment so that you're able to know the voice who is talking to you and who is not talking to you. So that is why when you say, I will never forgive that person until he or she comes and kneel down and beg me. You have placed yourself in the place of Satan. Okay? Only Satan talk in that manner. That is an arrogant way of talking. If you talk like that, you are talking the language of Satan. So, we should understand that unforgiveness is not something that is physical. It's almost 100% spiritual. So that's why we must deal with that issue in a spiritual manner. Because if not, it will consume us. Many people, okay, will not make heaven, not because they are aborted. Many people will not make heaven, not because they are Yahoo Plus. Many people will not make heaven, not because they are murderer or arm robber. But they will not make heaven on the basis of this issue of unforgiveness. 
So unforgiveness is a roadblock not only to our prosperity, okay, but to our making heaven. It's a roadblock. That's why it's a demon. Demon is the one that always wants to take human beings to hell. You know, in Psalm, in Matthew 25, if you read from verse 40 to 41, the Bible says, hell is not originally meant for human beings. But because of all of these kind of things, unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, all of these things, unforgiveness is the most dangerous one among them. So how do we do away with the demon of unforgiveness? How do we do away with it? Luke chapter 17, verse 1. It says, then said he unto disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him to whom they come. Okay? Offenses must come. People must offend you. Okay? Even if you decide to lock yourself inside the room, somebody will come and knock at your door and offend you. Satan, the demon of unforgiveness, always arrange some people, okay, just to get you annoyed, just to do something that will make you get annoyed, so that you will now begin to live a life of unforgiveness. It's a demon. No matter how you want to run. So it is a thing you must learn how to live with. People must offend you. That's what the Bible is saying. Jesus is the one that says so. He said it is impossible. Offense must come. Your wife must offend you. Your children must offend you. You must learn in the means of this offense, you must learn how to release your heart, how to release yourself from that bondage, because it's a bondage, that's why it's a demon. From that bondage of unforgiveness. Okay? If your, your wife, your children, your friends, your family, okay, can be used by these demons, even your boss, if your pastor is not spiritually okay, the same demon can use your pastor to offend you. Have you not heard about how the demon entered a pastor and he was prophesying fake prophecy? Demon of unforgiveness as a way of trying to manipulate others around us okay to offend us so that we can keep that that in our heart if you look at that place that we just read the bible says in that luke chapter 17 it said then said he unto to the disciples jesus is was one talking to them jesus was teaching about forgiveness because he knew that it's a very, very important topic. It's a very important something. He said, then said unto the disciples, it is impossible for that offenses will come. People must offend you. There is no way you can, you can escape it. Even those who are dead, people still go to their grave to offend them. They go to their grave, open it, search for gold, search for ring, search for this. Some, they use their skeleton body to do something. So even a dead person, he should be offended to know you that is alive. That is why Jesus is telling us here that it is impossible for you not to be offended. He said, but woe unto him to whom they, they come. He said, it were better for him that a maidstone were hung on him about his neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. So you can see that offense is necessary. It's part of our life. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a Christian, no matter the 
categories you fall into, people must offend you. So how do we do it away? Because one of the things you must understand, as I told you, is that when you allow offense, unforgiveness to overtake you, it means you are not going to make heaven. That is one of the worst things that happens to those people that live a life of unforgiveness. Okay? Some people live in their, with their wife with an offense. Some people live with their husband with a continuous offense. Some people live, okay? One thing we must know is that when you are looking for a perfect person, you have to die and go to heaven. There is no perfect person here on earth. Okay? Our conscience might be free, but you cannot say you are perfect. If any man of God tells you he is perfect, he might just be lying or be a fake man of God. You don't know when you will die, whether by rapture or by natural cause. When you die, okay, with the act of unforgiveness, you are not going to make heaven. No matter how anointed you are, whether you are the most anointed man of God, you are not going to make heaven. You know why you are not going to make heaven? Because you have, you have neglected the salvation that was given to us by Jesus. You have neglected, okay, you have refused to accept the salvation that was given to us by God through Jesus. Because Christ, all, everything about Jesus coming to this world is not about forgiveness. So if you, if, you, if you cannot live, okay, a life of forgiveness, it means you are not born again. No matter how you are using power, no, you are not born again. If you are born again, you must know that unforgiveness is a demon. And that is one of the reasons why Jesus came. One of the major reasons why Jesus came. Okay? He so come so that he can forgive us. We can forgive ourselves. That is the major, one of the major reasons. So when you refuse to, to forgive your brothers, your sister, you should know that if you die, whether you ask God to forgive you of your sin, your sin will not be forgiven. You will still go to hell. Please understand what I'm saying. If you live a life of unforgiveness and you know you're about to die and you ask God to forgive you until you forgive that person, if you believe that God has answered your prayer and you sleep and die, you will see yourself in the deepest air. That is one of the worst things that unforgiveness does to us. That's why the best thing to do is to live the life of love. Okay? Have love in your heart. Because Satan hates love. Demon of unforgiveness hates love. It is love. So when, when there is love present in your heart, the demon of unforgiveness will not have a place, a dwelling place in your heart. Our heart is, you see, the issue of unforgiveness is not in our mouth. It's not in our hand. It's not in our head. It's in our heart. That's why it's spiritual. And God, when you are dying, God searches your heart Okay, to determine whether you are going to hell or you are going to heaven. That's what I'm saying. Let's go to, or let's start from First Chronicle chapter 28 verse 9. Then we'll come to Second Chronicle chapter 16 verse 9. What it is says, it say, and those, it say, and thou, Solomon my son, know thou the God of the Father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searched all art. You can see now. He said, The Lord searched all art. 
and understanded all the imaginations of the thought. If thou seek him, he will be fine of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So you can see, if you look, if you want to worship at God, now this is in your heart. Your heart is where the unforgiveness dwells, not in your body. It's from your heart it manifests to your mouth. From the abundance of our heart, the mouth what? The mouth speak it. I will never forgive. It's from your heart until it comes to greet to, to beg me. What you are saying does not come from your mouth. It comes from your heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth won't speak it. So that is why one of the first danger of living a life of unforgiveness is that you should know that already you are in air fire. Okay? No matter how you cry on your sick bed, you ask God to forgive you. Until you forgive that person, you are not going to anywhere. You are going to hell. You are going to hell. Because people must offend you. So that is the first okay, danger of living a life of unforgiveness because it's a demon. When you are possessed with a demon of unforgiveness, okay, when you see the man like this or the woman, it's as if you should chop up his head. Okay? As if you should chop up the head of that person. Because there's a demon who has possessed your heart, which is called the demon of unforgiveness. It's a satanic agent. Why is he possessing you so that you can go to hell? Anybody who lives a life of unforgiveness is a fire bound. You cannot go to heaven. The best for you to do, forgive the person. According to Romans chapter 16, you avoid the person. Forgive the person, avoid the person. The Bible says, mark them and avoid them. But you must forgive them. Romans 16 verse 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them, okay, mark them, which cause, block their number, forgive them, block their number, delete their number, don't let him call you, and then be bringing of the demon into your heart, okay, when he calls you, Someone that you are forgiven yesterday because you had the message this morning and when you got to, you say, okay, I'm forgiving that, that person. Mm. The best for you to do, because you don't have anything to do with them or you don't have anything to do with her or she or him, just block the number, delete the number. Because if it costs you, maybe you are going through stress before afternoon tomorrow and you see the number of that person. Oh, what is this person calling me for again? Okay. So what the Bible says we should do, what God says we should do is this. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, Romans chapter 16, verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them avoid them because if you don't avoid them you will go down with air with them avoidance theories is important and more important than unforgiving theory so because you know that there's a demon behind unforgiveness okay and that demons okay mission concerning your life is to take you to hell because they, they know that once you die a life of unforgiveness 
You are going nowhere. You are joining them in hell. So that is the first danger of you living that life or allowing that demon to possess you. The best life you can live is to learn how to forgive quickly. Don't let it take, okay? Don't let it stay in your heart and take you to bed. The Bible says you can get annoyed, but don't sleep with your annoyance. Anybody can get annoyed. Anybody that cannot get annoyed is not human being. Even animals get annoyed. Even goat. When you flung goat, flung goat, flung goat, and you get to the wall, you come back, it will hit you because it's annoyed. So the Bible does not say you should not get annoyed on the basis of an offense. But don't let it take the better part of you. That's what God is saying. Don't let it take the better part of you. So, one of the danger of living that life, of allowing that demon to possess you, is that you cannot go to heaven. You are going to hell. Because whatever possess you as human being, okay, determine where you are going to. Human beings, all human beings all over the world is possessed with either the spirit of Satan and the spirit of God. You know, I told you we have three spirit on the head. Three of spirit. We have the spirit of God. We have the spirit of Satan. And then we have the spirit of man. And I told you, these two spirits, the spirit of man is constantly under the influence of either the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. No man is free on this earth. No end of state is free. No pastor is free. That's why Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. He said there are two types of yoke here on this earth. The yoke which is Jesus and the yoke of Satan. He says you must take one. He says his own yoke is light. But that of Satan is very heavy. So no man, anybody that tells you, hey, hey I don't go to church. I don't believe in pastors. I don't serve, I don't believe in God. Okay? Anybody who say I don't believe in God, he believe in Satan. Because he's possessed. He's doing the work of Satan. Either he's stealing or eating others or inventing atomic bomb to destroy everybody or having sex with a man or with all this or animal. Okay? No man on this earth is free. Either you are possessed with God's spirit or you are possessed with Satan's spirit. Because man's spirit is weak. Why this other two spirit? They are very strong and powerful. So the one that possesses you will determine where you are going to. If it's Satan's spirit, you know you are following him to hell. If it's God, you know you are following him to heaven. Or what they call Bilia. Call it, call it Bilia. You know, if you look at Quran 24 or so, when God created man, Bilia was asked to bow for God's creature. He says, the person you created in my presence, how will I be serving him? Is he the one not to serve me? That is why in Isaiah 14, and in Isaiah, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, he makes sure that human beings are serving him. One of the danger in living that life of, that demonic life, is that you cannot go to heaven, please. So if you are here this morning, or you are watching me from whatever platform, and you hate somebody to a level where you have made a vow that you will not forgive that person. That vow you made, you are not the one who made the vow. 
It is demon that made the vow for you. You are not the one talking. Okay, I told you, I say, we are controlled by two spirits. God's spirit, Satan's spirit. Some of the things you say, you are not the one saying it. Your papa, your mama, you know, go better for you. You they craze. You go mad. Yeah, yeah. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 1 to the end. He said, all those languages are coming from the mouth of Satan. Okay? Through you. They are not God's word. If you look at one of the dangers of living a life of unforgiveness is that you can never go to heaven no matter how you pray for forgiveness. Because you have rejected in totality the salvation that was brought to us by God through Jesus Christ. You have rejected it. You cannot go to heaven. Second danger is that when you live a life of unforgiveness, you are bound to face unnecessary attack and affliction from the same Satan. Okay? You are bound to face an attack and affliction from the same Satan who possesses you. You know, Satan will not just possess you. For example, if the Spirit of God possesses me, I will prophesy, I will heal, I will deliver. Okay? If Satan possesses you too, he can give you that demon of unforgiveness. He can give you sickness. He can give you hatred, not only unforgiveness. He can give you a lot of things. Because he will not just possess you and come alone and stay inside you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12, 29, so that you understand what I'm saying. It says, Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? The strong man is the demon of unforgiveness. Or the spiritual husband. Or the spiritual wife is the strong man. Or the idol spirit. Or the spirit of poverty. Or the spirit of death. Spirit of death is not dirty, but what it comes with is what kills. Diabetes, hypertension, all of these pains, back pains, okay, all of this. It says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? What is the goods? Okay, the goods are those affliction. Okay, if you are possessed now with your spiritual husband, okay, you should know what you can have infection. Most of those people that have infection have spiritual husband. Can have infection. Can have fibroid. Okay, you can be poor. People can hate you. They will just see you. They will hate you. Okay, you can have uh, this uh, plasma on your head, on your face. Okay, people see you, they say you are an old woman, even though you are young, because those are his goods. It's not one, it's goods. It will not only bring infection, it will bring fibroid, it will bring hatred, it will bring cobweb. So if it's a spirit of unforgiveness, it will bring a lot of things. Hatred, affliction, this or this. So what did he say? He said, you must first of all bind that spirit, that demon of, except he first bind the, the spirit of unforgiveness. And then he will spoil his good. When I touch you, <laughs> who are you? You know, most of this church you are going is fake. Because spiritually, spiritually, you are, you are not okay. You don't know anything about spirituality. You see this place. This is deliverance for you. When I touch you, 
Who are you? I'm a snake. What do you give? Which sickness you give him? Five sickness. Number one, edic. That is a goose. Number two, back pain. Number three, leg pain. Number four, infection. Oh yeah, remove them. It will remove. 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 They pack your load out. When you stand up, say, ah, eh, no pain again. This is what it means. That is what demon of unforgiveness is doing for you. It will give you an affliction. That is one of the, the second danger of allowing this spirit to possess you. It's not only him that will possess you. It will come with, with bad properties. Okay? Dirty chairs. Big end television. No plasma. If it's Holy Spirit that possess you, it will come with plasma. Okay? It will come with dollar. You see when that spirit possess that woman that testified? He has plenty brothers abroad. That woman that Abalis brought for me. You remember the testimony now? Yes, sir. He's suffering here, but he has plenty brothers abroad that has money. When the spirit was cast out of her, they gave her over four million that she had never seen before in her life. This is what I'm telling you. When he possesses you, you get to embassy. The wives will be burning like fire. They will say, who will give him rubber visa? They will not stop it. Bam! The person I want to give you will not see your, will not look your face. When you open it, you say, hey, five times, what have I done? I guide chapter one, verse five to seven. Say, go and examine yourself. So when you live a life of unforgiveness, somebody has access with you for two, three years. And he has promised to have sex to marry you. And now he has seen another soyo yo. Okay? The one that has tiny, tiny leg and abandon you. You now begin to go around. I will never forgive him. I will not forgive him. You will not marry a, a right man. The same man who refused to forgive his girlfriend that left him, that is the person you will marry. See, when you leave your marriage without God releasing you, you are going to take the same injury to the next person. You, you will marry up to three wives or three husbands. If God does, the Bible says, if God does not release you and you release yourself, you will say to yourself. But if God releases you, the same God that released you, the same God will say to you. But if you leave that marriage, that job, that church, because the pastor flogged you with insult, and then you carry that injury to the next church, anytime the pastor is preaching something that looks like, alike, where you are coming from, you now begin to mark him. So our heart is very important. So you must understand that Unforgiveness is, is a demon. You must do away with it. So, no matter the danger, let's go to Mark chapter 11. The third danger of unforgiveness, Mark 11 from verse 23 to 26. He says, for verily, for verily I say, I say no worry. He says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. Okay? 
and you shall have them. Then 25, and when you start praying, forgive. You can see, when you start praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your heavenly father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. 26, but if you do not forgive, then I will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. You can see now. So the, the third danger of allowing this demon to possess you is that when you pray for bread, you will receive a stone. When you pray for fish, you will receive a scorpion. When you pray for house, you will receive a tent. When you pray for safe journey, kidnapper will welcome you. Any man of God, that is why you can see some man of God when they pray, God does not answer their prayer. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. <laughs> God will not hear you. How do we do away with this demon? Number one, we must possess God's spirit. We must possess God's spirit. If God's spirit lives in us, no matter the offense or the offenses we face, even though it comes, it will go away because the spirit of God in us will not allow that demon of offense to remain. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 17 to 18. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You can see now, the loss of the flesh. What is the loss of the flesh? Part of it is unforgiveness. I will take him on, I will bring him to unforgiveness. I will be praying until come to Ask for forgiveness. So it's a loss of the flesh. You want the guy or the woman to be humble, okay, by your evil prayer. If not, you will not forgive. But if you say, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, you can see that. It lusted against the spirit. When you are possessed of God's spirit, hmm? when you allow God's spirit to possess you, you can be attacked or be afflicted, but it will not last. You can be poor, but it will not last. You can be barren, it will not last. You can be sick, it will not last. Because for the flesh lusted against the flesh, against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to, the, to one to the other. They are contrary. So that you cannot do the things that you would. So that you will not do what you want. If you are possessed with a God spirit, you see pointed breasts. You wash. Oh. Hmm. Before you start losing, it will bring you back again. That's what I'm saying. Where the flesh, forget about all these holy, holy men of God deceiving you. You can see what he wrote there. That is God speaking to us. Know that, this is what I'm saying. They could be going. Just jam me. We're going. Okay? Say, what am I doing to you? Why do you jam me? You now tell me, say, ah, Okay, why you not come off a road? <laughs> we are now come and say, Mr. Road. Mm. 
What is this? It will not allow you to do what you want to. But if you are not possessed with that spirit, you hit him. That's what I'm saying. But if you are possessed, this is what, this is what I'm saying. So, when you possess God's spirit, this demon will not be alive in your, in your heart. He will want to do it, but he cannot stay. Number two, how do we do away with this demon of unforgiveness? Okay? You must engage in constant reading of the word of God. Okay? Constant meditation. Of the word of God. Constant meditation. Let's go to the book of Psalm 119. Verse 11. 11. The it's, word have I hid in my heart. It says the word have I hid in my heart. That I may not sin against him. That I may not sin against you. Okay. So. When you constantly. Meditate. Study, you become part of you. You become part of your of your heart. Okay, it takes total control, according to Act nineteen twenty. It says it will take total control over your heart. So, if you want to avoid this demon of unforgiveness, you have to study your Bible always. So that it will become part of you. Number three, you need to regularly pray. Regular prayer is very important. When you pray and fast, you pray and miss it with fasting. It's very hard for you. Because when you want to pray a genuine prayer, you must know that you must forgive brother B and brother C. That is a genuine prayer. You must know you must forgive them in your heart. Because you know, if you refuse to forgive them, the Lord will not answer your Psalm 66 verse 18. What did he say? Psalm 66 verse 18. Can we go there quickly? Psalm 66. If I regard iniquities in my heart, the Lord will not hear us. You can see now. So, when you understand this logic, and you want to, you are the one that pray 24-7 in the name of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, the name of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have mercy on me, and forgive me, and deliver me, Holy Spirit, Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus. You, you see, you must pray 24 hours, 24-7, on the road, Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, in your mercy, deliver me. Deliver me, deliver me, save me, heal me, prosper me, okay, protect me. On the road, you are praying. You don't need to open your mouth. If you open your mouth, you are praying for straight air prayer. Anybody that says you will take your mouth. Because if you go to New Bini Market, you see people talking to themselves. Because tomato has, has, is now costly. Okay? I don't buy this tomato now. My husband will say I steal our money, it's money. And there I see it's still money. You say, Madam, are you talking to me? No, sorry, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I'm not talking to you, sorry. So God bless you. Plus 234. 803-846. 3326 to book an appointment with the Son of Man today.